And as quickly as we've got week three out of the way, we're straight into our week four match. Today, we're going to be facing off against the Blazing Breilooms. And this is the team that's going to get us our third win in a row. We have Tornadus, Dr. Croak, Urshifu, Suian Braviary, Gardevoir, and making his debut, Abelstiff. One thing I noticed when I was going over the Breloom squad was they have a lot of weaknesses to a lot of the Pokemon that I have. And they can't tear away from all of them. So with them having a bunch of psychic weaknesses, a bunch of flying weaknesses, a bunch of dark weaknesses, it just made sense to me to bring in Braviary, Gardevoir, and Urshifu. Since they're a mostly physical offense team, Marble Stiff made sense. They have a couple of mons that are scary. Um, Urshifu Rapid Strike being the main one. So we are going into an Urshifu mirror match almost. And they have a lot of kind of mid speed tier mons. So speed control is again going to be fairly important. So I have gone with some speed investment on most of the mons and I've made Urshifu max speed. Urshifu is once again going to be kind of our closer. Our main win condition from doing the calcs is going to be Braviary. Um, he hits the majority of their team all super effective. And those that it doesn't, it's got a two shot against. So kind of game one is almost going to be the top four mons on the screen. We'll lead Shifu with Toxicroak. Whoever their speed control is, whether that's going to be Cresselia, Talonflame, Slow King, Haunter, the only one that we won't delete turn one is going to be Cresselia. So it's Fake Out into Wicked Blow. Whatever their speed control is, it's going to get one shot. Or if it's Cresselia, it's not going to get up Trick Room. And then because we outspeed it, we're going to take it out turn two. We're going to have the speed advantage if that goes to plan. The small problem comes in the damage output of Toxicroak. I've had to put Choice Band on it, which means we're going to have to swap him out turn two. But nine times out of ten, we're going to want to be bringing in Tornadus turn two anyway to get up that Tailwind. If we've stopped their Trick Room going up, then more than likely it's going to be Braviary coming in. So turn one, Lead Tox, Croak, Urshifu, Fake Out into Wicked Blow. Turn two, Swap Out Tox, Croak, Bring in Tornadus. Or Braviary, depending on the situation. Braviary, if we want that immediate offense. Tornadus, if we want to get up our speed control first. Kind of going to depend a little bit on the board state. What their second mon is that they're leading. They do have options for both Wisp and Spore. So, to get around that, I've gone... Terragrass Lumberry on Urshifu. If it comes down to it and we need to not go to sleep, then we have the Terragrass there. Lumberry will cure the first status condition that's put on it. Mavostiff, if we need him, 
has got safety goggles. He has a good matchup into the majority of their team. So if we do need that Intimidate, then we can bring in Mabostiff. Super effective Crunch. Psychic Fangs. They've got a couple of mons that can set screens. So if that's becoming an issue, we've got the Psychic Fangs. They've also, like I said, got quite a few weaknesses to Psychic. So it's just an all-round good move into the Breilooms. Gardevoir is there more as our fairy damage dealer this time around. I've also given her skill swap in case something like a bear tick, a Hariyama, for example, start causing us a few problems. We can skill swap away Slush Rush or Guts, give them a pretty useless ability and synchronize and that completely nerfs them. I did think about going Focus Sash on her again, but I think all overall the Citrus Berry is going to be more consistent. There's not much going to one shot Gardevoir with that amount of defensive investment and a Terra, Terra Fairy Moonblast even coming off of just 68 special attack is going to Oko a lot of their team. Overall, most of the things have been EV'd just to live Urshifu Surgeon Strikes. Because if you can live Surgeon Strikes, we'll live anything else that they have. I think the only exception to that was Gardevoir, who needed to live something that's completely escaping me right now. Everything else has been... As you can see with the 252 HP and 60 defense, it's defense up to the first, up, up to the second bump in the calc versus Urshifu, and then just dumped everything in else into HP. Attack wise, everything's got enough attack to Oko what it needs to Oko. The exceptions to that being Toxicroak and Braviary. Toxicroak, I wanted max attack adamant just for the most amount of damage possible. Braviary, same. It's not quite max special attack, but it's as high. It, it's dumped every spare EV into special attack to get huge air slashes and huge psychics. I couldn't figure out a valuable fourth move for Braviary. So I went with Roost. Elongate his presence. You know, if it gets down to below 50% HP, we can Roost. We lose our, ter uh, our flying typing for a turn, but we can protect the next turn. And that's kind of it, really. There's not a great deal of tech gotten into the team this week, other than really skill swap and uh, psychic fangs. The two main damage dealers on our team have both got the Terra Grass. We've got the Lumberry on Urshifu to counter the burn, potential burns. Gardevoir is a good backup. Thunderbolt to deal with anything that Terra waters. It's also pretty good neutral damage into a lot of their team. They don't have many resistances to electric. Yeah, that's kind of it really no great crazy story about the team this week it's very similar uh, tactically to last week but we should fingers crossed the braviary popping off this week okay it is time for game number four week number four in RDL and we are up against the blazing Breilooms now I this is kind of the six I'm expecting them to bring this is the six that I think have the best matchup into my team he's brought Breiloom every single week I'm 
pretty sure he's brought Cresselia every single week. Urshifu has a really good matchup in with that fighting type versus the many ice types. But I wouldn't be surprised to not see Urshifu, maybe not see Hariyama because I do have quite a lot of flying types. But they can terrestrialize away from that. So that's what I'm expecting. This is what I'm bringing. This is what he's bringing. I wasn't far off. I wasn't far off. I'm very surprised to see no Urshifu. And... Oh, he's not brought Breloom. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. Hmm. We have the plan. We stick to the plan. Game one, stick to the plan. Game two, out the window. Don't have to worry about the spore. That's good. What music are we gonna have? Let's go with. What do I think? What do I? Let's go with the team star. Huh. <sighs> so. Pops. Earth lead. Torn. Braviary in the back. <clears throat> Out the speed control. Get my own speed control. Ursh and Braviary go to work. Oh, that it is. Oh, I've lost my, uh, smoking and, oh my. Okay. The Slow King is Psychic and Poison. Take that box. Now, do I think he's going to go Trick Room or Tailwind? Trick Room is going to be more problematic, so let's just find a bullet right the Trick Room. Oh, it didn't kill! Oh, no way! I knew it! I knew the trick room was coming! Okay. Toxic Coke's gotta come out. Braviary comes in. And then... Ursh. Urshifu now should underspeed the talent flame. That's just gonna be it. Yeah. The reception. Yeah. 
I'm just going to double attack here, I think. See what he does. Scout him out. That's two turns of trickling down, man. That messed up the fake out. That's good. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. No. We might lose both mods here. Oh, survived. Life bulb's gone though. That's a bulker. I think that's probably okay. I didn't do shit. Oh, what? No way! Killed me. That's completely messed things up now. I reckon Toxicroak's gonna go down. We should deal with you, don't worry. Yep. Nice no, plus two. Did nothing. Amazing. And we're back. Yes. Get rid of Harry Armour. Now the question is... What do I want to do here? Fight and fight. Now we're going to have to fake out again. Switch. And Harry Armour's gone. Slow King's gonna take the slash. Fine. Poisoned him, nice. Oh, that didn't kill. Come on. Back to overs, okay. Ah, oh, this is pain. We need to stop the trick room going up again. But at the same time, I 
tree. To do that, I'm going to go and bring in my list. Is it resisted? That knockoff just really messed with my stats, man. Really messed with my stats. Not expect that for some reason. Yeah, that's right. Oh, what? Ah. Oh. Oh man! That's crazy. That was crazy. Okay. Can't fake out again. Sucker punch should deal with Harry on that thing. No, it won't. We still need to do that, do it that way. We've got that on. Head of glass. Lucky blow. Definitely not. Okay, we're gonna lose game one. Shouldn't have let that bear tick get set up. That didn't kill! Oh my god! Wow! Okay. He's trained himself this well here. Trained his guys up well. Take a second. Calm down and think. Airship crew, pretty useless. Got icicle crash on that bear tick. I wish I had roost. Okay, I think we're gonna need to bring Guard of War in the back this time. that we need the tailwind we didn't stop him getting up the trick room though that's the problem is he gonna go trick room again and who do we leave behind I think I leave the Urshi behind but then We didn't stop Trick Room, but if we don't stop Trick Room, how do we stop the Tailwind?
gone with a fake out this time. It's going to be fake out and trick room. But my fake out's going to be faster than his. That's fine. That is fine. Get it up. I'm gonna let him have it. He didn't go for chilly reception. That's interesting. Change with the left on trip room. Two. Wonder. Interesting. And there's the chilly reception. Could have retaunted. 
should have retaunted. is <sighs> that turn of trick room. Oh, that's fine. Idiot. He's broken the gale wing, so there's no priority on his thing in here. This is bad, this is bad. This is still very bad. Oh, lived! Oh, come on! That's fine, because I've got... I've got a switch out. Right, that's slow king. Don't have a way to break either of those. Nothing. Keep forgetting my terror. Oh my god, he's faster! Oh yes, Toxicoat lived. That did nothing though. No. We're done. We done, boys! Good game to Breloom. Yeah, so we take another L there, but we two and two. Can't uh 
not Braylon Boy there. His his prep was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, putting uh knockoff on Harry Armour, completely rep plan A. And Haunter being faster plus um Harry Armour living slash just yeah. I was expecting the trick room, but I was also expecting to deal with it a bit better. I'm gonna have to watch it watch the games back again. Because I think there was things I could have done a little bit differently in game two. But at the same time I'm I'm not entirely sure. I don't I don't like going into it immediately following a win or a loss to be honest. But we've got to take our L's to get better. So yeah. Very, very well played to uh Braylon Boy there. It was a team that I really wasn't expecting and he played it very, very well. Very, very well. His prep was phenomenal. On to game five against Fluffo and the Gothitelles. Okay, now we get to the hard part. Match analysis. I've tried to record this now four times, I think. This is absolutely the last attempt I'm going to make. If I still come off as salty and people still think I'm devaluing Breland Boy's performance, then there's nothing I can do. I absolutely take my hat off to Braylon Boy. He played incredibly well. He prepped really, really well. But I do feel like if some things had gone my way, then the result would have been very different. Uh, let's start with the mistakes I made. First of all, in prep. Not necessarily a mistake that cost me anything, but a mistake nonetheless. Definitely a mistake in prep, attention to detail wise. I forgot to put Roost on Braviary. When reading and adding moves to the Mons, how I didn't notice that I hadn't put Roost there, I don't know. Maybe something in my brain was like, well, you're probably never going to need it, so why bother? And to be honest, there were a couple of spots where I may have been able to click it and it may have helped, but I'm not sure it would have helped at all in that battle. The biggest mistake I made in prep was putting Choice Band on Toxicroak. I'm not the biggest fan of Choice items anyway, and these two battles highlighted why. Um, in theory it was absolutely fine in practice there were too many situations where I wanted to keep Toxicroak on the field and just click a different move if I'd been able to play a few test games on showdown I probably would have seen it and chosen a different item because in theory I needed the, that extra damage on him but in practice, I'd have gladly sacrificed that to not have to constantly switch him around. It was literally switch him in, fake out to get the partner Pokemon to be able to do what it needed to do and then switch him out again. And I lost so much board presence because of that. Now, on to the individual games. In game one, the big thing was not keeping calm after seeing that close combat miss and after seeing the damage Braviary lost after the, its life orb was knocked off. Those two things combined just threw me for a loop. And again, I think that's probably inexperience being able to take a couple of seconds to just pause, center yourself, even take a turn double protecting or something to just give me that bit of time to think of a plan B on the fly. Another one was clicking air slash when psychic was the stronger move. More inexperience. I keep forgetting that psychic is super effective against fighting. Nothing more to say about that really. But even neutrally Psychic is a stronger move 
than a slash continuing the uh inexperience showing uh sending in torn to eat that rock slide was i guess a mistake ultimately torn wasn't that useful to me in game one but i'd forgotten that bear tick got rock slide even though it's in my prep notes it's a mistake worth mentioning it didn't cost me anything really but definitely needs to be brought up the main in play mistake i made was the end game as you can see on the screen it come down to bear tick on around 85 percent harry armor on around 30 35 percent i've got a 70 percent hp tox croak and a full hp urshifu now what i did was to click poison jab and a terra grass wicked blow the main mistake here was the terra grass why i thought it was a good idea to terra grass in front of a bear tick that i know for a fact carries icicle crash i don't know that is watching it back that is an ultimate face palm moment You see is fake out coming to Urshifu. Poison jab does decent damage. And then Icicle Crash takes out Toxicroak. What I should have done was to protect Urshifu and close combat bear tick. Now if we look at the situation, the fake out is always going to come into Urshifu. It's the biggest threat on my board. So, protect saves me having to terror, which I shouldn't have done anyway. And it saves me taking that extra little bit of damage, which in the end game, every point of HP counts. Now, at the beginning of the turn, Bear Tick is on about 80 to 85%. I click Poison Jab, which at best, does 35 percent even as a fighting type close combat at a minimum does 43 percent and at best does 51 percent if we then take into account bear tick is poisoned which does one eighth of its max hp every turn and leftovers is only recovering one sixteenth anything other than a min roll on toxic croaks close combat and the following turn, a close combat from Urshifu into that bear tick KOs. Now, I didn't see anything other than knockoff and fake out on Hariyama, but I've got to assume it had a fighting move. So, the second turn of that end game, I know Urshifu is going to outspeed the bear tick. It's probably going to KO from that range. I can terror grass Urshifu. KO the better tick with a close combat and that means that any fighting move other than close combat doesn't KO Urshifu. Turn three, Urshifu again outspeeds. We can close combat and get the win. Obviously, I'm just guessing at what moves Hariyama had because we only ever saw fake out and knock off during that game. But from my calcs and my looking over the game i do think it was vested because of a couple of the special attack rolls during that match so there was two moves on there that were never revealed which more than likely were a fighting move and potentially another coverage move but if that fighting move is anything other than close combat we win if it is close combat with a terror grass 
odds are in our favor to win. Since we're talking what ifs, this, first of all, is an absolutely perfect lead from Ray Boy. I don't think he could have confused me more in the mo in that moment than he did with this lead. <laughs> it had me thinking, will he go tailwind? Will he go trick room? When what I really needed to do was to call back up the team screen. And I would have seen that nothing other than potentially bear tick, depending on its ability, would even function under Tailwind. So there was absolutely no way that Talonflame was going Tailwind. If I'd gone fake out into Wicked Blow on Slow King, that's 99% guaranteed to KO. That Wicked Blow alone, by my calcs in prep, getting potential spreads, was a roll to KO. It would have prevented Trick Room. Now, it would also have left Urshifu open to a Wisp or a Brave Bird. We saw Acrobatics, not Brave Bird, but I didn't know that turn one. Brave Bird was a max attack adamant Talonflame, 30% chance to KO. So we probably get the Wicked Blow into Slow King or go down turn two after we've sucker punched the Talonflame. But with Tornados and Braviary in the back, we probably had enough to win the match from there. Tailwind up, Braviary is always going first. It was probably going to be able to take out the majority of what Braylon Boy had. It would have been really, really interesting to see how that game one would have played out without Trick Room up. Game two. Now, I actually feel like I played this game really, really well. There was a couple of mistakes that I made, which the main one being the lead. If I lead Toxicroak plus Tornadus instead of that Toxicroak Braviary that you see, I've been able to fake out into Taunt, which would have covered for Mental Herb and Cobra Cloak. With it being mental herb the fake out prevents the trick room going up turn one taunt would then ensure it doesn't go up again and because as we saw later in the game it is mental herb we can retaunt turn two for whatever reason i thought it was going to be the same lead with maybe him going tailwind Game two instead of Trick Room. That was just a dumb idea on my part. There's no way he goes Tailwind in this match with the six that he brought. As it happened, they brought Fake Out. So there was no way I was going to prevent a turn two Trick Room unless he'd gone Fake Out into Toxicroak, which Toxicroak's always going to be faster than Harry Armor. Would have been. A mistake on his part now the other mistake that i made was this right here i actually hover over psychic and still click air slash We watch how this plays out. Trick Room isn't up at this point. If that had been Psychic, that KOs. We see here, in the game, and to be honest, before doing a bunch of calcs, thought that that air slash had low rolled and it should have KO'd. Because if it's running anything other than Assault Vest, with no special defense investment, that air slash deletes Harry Armor. With the air slash, it lives on around 15 HP, 15 to 20 HP, which it did. But Psychic is an almost guaranteed KO. 
and me constantly clicking and slash instead of psychic is one of my biggest irritations with myself through both of these games. Now we get to the part that I've been having to re-record over and over again. Now, I'm not usually one to complain about crits or misses or damage rolls costing me the game. But that's when it's only one. Across these two matches, it felt like it was happening over and over again. Now, some of it, you can put down to EV spreads, items on the part of Braylon Boy. For example, Hariyama living that air slash. It could have very well been EV to live that. More likely, it was vested. There's a few with Slow King as well, which... Again, it's one of those where eight EVs here or there can mean the difference between a Pokemon living a hit it shouldn't or dying pretty easily. But it honestly just felt like it was one of those days where if it wasn't a guarantee, I lost the role. In Pokemon, that happens. So I cut a lot of the salt and kept in what I thought were three absolutely key moments that cost me across the two games. So, keep the salt flow. So, here we are, game one. And the main thing that screwed me over was this right here. First of all, we've got the knockoff taking away Braviary's life orb. This is one thing that, not a role, but I want to mention it anyway. That is one of the things that sent me off on a tilt because I didn't realize just how bad Braviary's damage was going to be without that life orb. Anyway, tangent over. Bear tick bulks up. Second bulk up, but it's absolutely fine. Because close combat is going to hit, right? No, it doesn't. Snow Cloak makes made that hundred percent accurate close combat into an eighty percent accurate close combat. If everything else in this game plays out as it did, other than that close combat miss, we get to that end game with Beartick at around 50% HP, meaning that Toxicroak close combat goes in, Toxicroak dies to the Icicle Crash, as it did, but the tick of poison at the end of that turn kills Beartick. If that's close combat hits, I win the game. Right here. This ending would have been so, so different if that Beartick health bar is missing another 30%. Everything else in the match could have played out exactly as it was. But if that health bar is missing another 30%, I guarantee win this match. Game two, and this is where two of the major crazy rolls happened. The first one being this. That crit on Braviary. We look here at Max Attack Adamant. That knockoff does at best 77%. So there is no chance it gets the KO. Even with the crit, it's 87% chance to KO. 
for both of those things to happen is insane. It's 30% chance to crit and then an 87% chance for that crit to KO. So the odds of two of them happening together is probably 15 to 20%. Without the crit, max roll will leave Braviary at around 20 to 25 HP. I can stall out the trick room far more safely because even without the life orb, Braviary is still going to be doing some pretty decent damage. They're going to have to go. Braylon Boy's going to have to go after the Braviary and finish it off. So that was turn one of Trick Room. Turn two of Trick Room, I protect Braviary. Turn three of Trick Room, he has to take it out. We're now on the last turn of Trick Room. I've got three Mons there. I can potentially stop Trick Room going up again and win the game. That crit probably cost me that match. But it was one more that definitely did. This right here. Talon Flame living that Thunderbolt is maybe 15-20% chance after the U-turn from Tornadus, calling it a mid-roll on the U-turn, Town Flames at 140 HP. That Thunderbolt does 130 to 154. So all I needed was a mid-roll for that Thunderbolt to KO. That's on screen is a 62% chance to Oko from full HP. It wasn't at full HP. If that Talon Flame dies, that Poison Jab goes into Haunter, which is already at about 75%. That Poison Jab deals minimum 25% to Haunter. So that's going to leave Haunter at less than 50% HP. I lose Gardevoir. On the next turn, Tornadus takes out Haunter, Slowking takes out Torn. We're left with Slowking and Toxicroak 1v1 with the X Scissor from Slowking guaranteed to KO in two hits. And this is kind of what I was talking about in the it. I don't get salty if I lose the game based on one crit or one miss. But to have three absolutely key moments go against me to cost me two games, it's kind of heartbreaking because the Braylon Boy played so well across these two games that he likely would have won one of them anyway which means for example i missed that close combat in game one game one plays out exactly as it did me completely screwing up the end game brain on boy wins that like i said i thought i played really really well in game two so if either of those stupidly unlucky things don't happen in game two i win game two we go on to a game three and to me that would have been the fair outcome for me to have played in my opinion so well in that game two and to be undone by two horrendous pieces of bad luck it's hard to take The fairest outcome of this would have been a game three, in my opinion. If I'd lost a game three, I wouldn't have been anywhere near as salty of, about that close combat miss and a few of the other damage rolls that really didn't go my way that I've cut out of this video. And 
not wanting to speak for Braylon Boy, but I think if it had gone to a game three, I don't think he would have been too unhappy with that win or lose. But I'm going to leave it there. I'm disappointed in how I played game one. I'm disappointed in a, how I prepped, even though the prep was rushed by because of personal circumstances. And the way the entire match played out, I just, I don't want to dwell on it anymore. So week five match has already been played. I'll get that uploaded as soon as I can. Till then, goodbye.